We know microplastics are everywhere, but good news, you can control how much you bring into your home and in your food. In this video, we'll go over nine everyday sources of microplastics you can easily avoid at the grocery store. The items we'll be talking about in this video can be found in every aisle, <laughs> but don't worry, we won't just tell you to stop buying them all and become a self-sufficient hermit who lives off the land. <laughs> we'll offer some simple alternatives so you can make the best choices that fit your lifestyle. Let's start with some of the more obvious stuff. First up, plastic packaging. But I know you'll be surprised by some of the things we cover later on. No matter what aisle or display you're first greeted with when you walk into a grocery store, chances are most of the items you're browsing come in plastic. From the plastic clamshells holding our strawberries to the plastic bags that our bread comes in, these single-use plastics are leaching microplastics and chemicals into our foods. It's best to look for brands that don't use plastic at all and instead package their strawberries in cardboard baskets or pick up your bread from the bakery section where you can request a paper bag. I know it's not completely avoidable, but I know you'll do your best. And if your grocery store has bulk bins, that's a great affordable way to use your own non-plastic containers, such as glass jars. And if we're being honest, most produce doesn't really need to go into its own little bag. You're going to wash your apples before eating them anyways. But if you insist on bagging your greens or other produce, you know, so they don't roll around in your cart or car, bring your own hemp or cotton produce bags. That said, depending on your store and current non-plastic supply arsenal, you might not have plastic-free options for everything on your grocery list. If that's the case, you can at least prioritize avoiding foods that are meant to be cooked in their plastic packaging because heat does a great job at breaking down plastic, promoting the release of microplastics and other unsavory chemicals. Meaning those K-cups are giving you more than just coffee when near boiling water is being run through them. This is especially true with frozen foods that claim their packaging is safe for the microwave or oven. It's best to transfer them into a glass or metal tray before reheating. However, if you're not heating up that frozen lasagna in the plastic tray it came in, you still might want to avoid it altogether. But we'll touch on processed foods later on. The next two items we'll cover technically fall into plastic food packaging, but we feel it's important to address them separately since their plastic content may not be as obvious. Let's start by talking about cartons. While they're mostly made of paper, those milk and juice cartons need some kind of inner lining to protect the paper from the moisture inside. This lining consists of aluminum and plastic. There currently doesn't seem to be any brands that don't use some sort of plastic in their carton lining. Even the eco-friendly ones use plant-based plastics, which, by the way, can still leach microplastics and chemical additives. If you're wondering just how much microplastic is shedding from those cartons, both those made with traditional and plant-based plastics, look out for an upcoming video where we send samples of various cartoned plant milks to labs to find out for ourselves. The only way to truly minimize the amount of microplastic that comes with your favorite beverage is to buy it in a glass container or to make it yourself at home. You can easily get started by making your own plant milk, juice, and even cold brew at home with the almond cow. Making plant milk has never been easier and the cost of ingredients for making each batch is just a fraction of the cost for a carton at the store. The almond cow also doesn't include plastic on any of the food contact surfaces, so you don't have to worry about microplastics shedding into your beverage of choice. If you're done being limited by what's on the shelf, order your almond cow today by following the link in the description. Now let's talk about cans. You're probably thinking that canned foods and beverages are a great, easy, affordable way to avoid plastic packaging. But unfortunately, even those cans contain plastic. You see, the inside of your favorite bubbly water cans are lined with plastic to prevent corrosion. And a lot of those linings 
contain EPA, a chemical notorious for its ability to leach out of plastics and into food and beverages. So what is one to do? Well, one alternative is to buy your beans and vegetables dry or dehydrated, which can be easier to find in plastic-free packaging than cooked veggies. But if you don't have time to boil your own beans, luckily most canned foods and beverages have glass alternatives. And well, yes, the lids to those jarred and bottled goods do have a small amount of plastic lining and it's a lot less plastic coming into contact with your food than with a can. Also, you now have a glass jar you can reuse for storing food at home instead of that plastic Tupperware, which we'll come back to in a bit. Now that we've covered food packaging, let's take a look inside at the food itself, specifically processed foods. We've all heard that processed foods are bad for us with higher contents of unhealthy ingredients like seed oils, artificial flavors, and coloring to name a few. But did you know that processed foods also contain more microplastics? These foods have even more exposure to plastic machinery, intermediate packaging, and food processing equipment. Yet this is another reason to limit your intake of processed foods, especially ultra processed foods. By the way, we have a ton of videos coming soon that'll dive into ingredients commonly found in grocery less foods. Some that are totally safe and others that are less than great for your health. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss them. We recommend to trade out some of your ultra processed snacks for less processed treats, like dried fruits, nuts, or whole grain crackers with hummus. Try making more things from scratch. Not only will you save money, but you'll be surprised how easy it is. Now let's move on to the next item on our list, rice. Yes, even rice, especially parboiled and instant rice, has been found to contain microplastics. While some of this contamination comes from the soil and water pollution, it's believed a lot of the microplastics are coming from the milling, packaging, and storage processes. This means a lot of the microplastic particles are just sitting on the surface of the rice. The good news is simply rinsing your rice before cooking can reduce plastic contamination by 20 to 40%. Now, it's unclear how well rinsing works for the parboiled and instant rices compared to the raw rice, but we did find that parboiled and instant rice were found to have four times the amount of microplastics before any rinsing. It might be best to just stick with cooking raw rice from Netwa. Now these next two food items might surprise you like it surprised us, salt and sugar. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. Salt has to be mined and regardless of whatever fruit, vegetable, or grass your sugar comes from, it has to go through some kind of manufacturing process to be extracted. And as we explained earlier, the more processing steps, the more opportunities for microplastic contamination. Now, not all salts and sugars are equally polluted. Sea salt has the highest level of contamination, followed by lake salt, with rock salts having the least amount of microplastics. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of research comparing the contamination levels across different types of sugars, but it's safe to assume that less refined sugars like raw cane and turbinado sugar would have the lowest contamination levels. You should also avoid using plastic containers to store your sugar and salt, considering how abrasive they can be. Another great use for those glass jars. And this actually leads us to our next item, plastic Tupperware. This might be an obvious one, but I do wanna go over a common misconception regarding microwave safe plastic. We also acknowledge that not everyone can afford to just dump all their Tupperware and replace it with expensive glass containers. So we'll also go over some best practices for using and cleaning Tupperware. That way you can minimize the amount of microplastic leaching while you slowly switch over to non-plastic containers. But if you've already made that switch, you'll wanna stay tuned for the next few items we'll cover as you might still be exposing your food containers to microplastics. First off, let's address what microwave safe really means. Simply, it just means that your Tupperware won't melt or crack in the microwave. 
that's it. It doesn't actually mean that the plastic won't leach chemicals or shed microplastics when heated. So you'll want to move your food out of your Tupperware or plastic to go containers before putting it in the microwave. We recommend not putting your Tupperware through any extreme temperature changes to avoid making it brittle and therefore more likely to shed microplastics. This means you'll need to be careful where you put your plastic in the dishwasher, especially when using the hot or high temp wash cycle. And this was shocking to us, but freezing and thawing your Tupperware multiple times will also put some wear on it. A good tip, you'll know it's time to get rid of a container when it shows signs of cracking or develops those weird white splotches that just don't seem to go away no matter how much you clean them. Those spots are actually areas of damaged plastic. And if you try to gently scratch them with your fingernail, you'll literally see how easy it is for small pieces of plastic to come off. Now let's talk about what you're using to clean your dishes and food storage containers. If you're using a sponge, chances are that sponge is made of plastic and it's shedding microplastics like crazy. We're talking 6.5 million microplastic fibers per gram of sponge. Now, if you're using a plastic dish brush, you won't get nearly as much shedding since they're much more durable, but microplastics are still going to shed off just at a much slower rate. If you really want to avoid microplastics ending up all over your kitchen sink and counter, there are a lot of great plant-based sponges and brushes on the market. Not only are they plastic free, but depending on what material they're made of, they might also be cleaner as woods like bamboo tend to have antimicrobial properties. But what about after you're done washing your dishes and counters? you still might be sprinkling microplastics all over your kitchen with this next item. Dish towels. They're a basic kitchen staple, but do you know what your towels are made of? Most cheap dish towels, or those marked as fast drying, are made of polyester, aka plastic. Meaning as you wipe your dishes and kitchen counters dry, you're shedding plastic fibers everywhere. So. Even if you switched all of your Tupperware to glass and replaced your sponges with bamboo and Cecil brushes, you're going to have to replace those dish towels to prevent shedding microplastics all over your dishware, produce, and even hands. We recommend that you swap out your polyester dish towels for ones made of natural fibers like cotton, linen, or hemp. Now that we've covered some of the main sources of microplastics in the kitchen, we're going to move on to two items you're bringing into your bathroom, which are shedding microplastics directly into your mouth. We're going to look at your toothbrush and floss. Most toothbrushes you'll find in the grocery store are going to be made of plastic, but if they're marketed as being made of natural materials like, say, bamboo, make sure you read the packaging carefully. It's very possible that the bristles are still made of plastic. They are pretty sneaky. They may just color the plastic bristles to look like bamboo. Some clues you'll want to look out for on packaging are claims about the bristles being PVA free or call outs to the handle being compostable rather than the entire toothbrush itself. You'll also want to invest in floss made from natural materials like silk or bamboo to truly avoid shedding microplastics against your teeth and gums every night. Remember, every effort counts in the fight against microplastics and add up to a lifetime of difference. Subscribe for more tips on living a plastic-free life and let us know what steps you've already taken in the comments below.